how to prepare for your first mushroom trip. Why will you take magic mushrooms or truffles? Determine this clearly, see this very clearly, this is important. If you want to do self-development work, if you want to do inner healing, then I've got a link for that in the description down below, as well as here or here, I don't know which side. But if you just want to recreationally use magic mushrooms or magic truffles with a couple of friends, then this video is perfect for you. In this video, I will give you tips and tricks to prepare for your first magic mushroom slash truffle trip. What are the most likely obstacles you could face during your trip? How do I dose 100% accurate all the time? That and many more coming up. I do not condone the use of any legal or illegal substances. This video is strictly made for educational and harm reduction purposes only. And before I begin this video, I want to say that at the end of this video, I have some valuable information about magic truffles. Magic truffles basically are a replacement of magic mushrooms containing the same exact psychoactive substances as magic mushrooms. Plus, they are legally available. But I'll explain more of that at the end of this video. With that said, here are eight things you should know before starting a magic mushroom trip. Number one, do your own research. First, I will give you a compliment for even searching for a video on how to prepare yourself for a trip because most people just ingest the substance like without knowing what they're going to take and then the mushrooms are like, surprise motherfucker. When you are researching a substance or magic mushrooms, look up YouTube videos, look up trip reports, look up what it does to your body and mind. Even though I recommend looking up information about the substance you will be taking, don't get dragged into that information because it has the tendency to make you expect some things of your trip. Multiple YouTubers, multiple people on uh, forums that where you read trip reports, they say that magic truffles are always awesome and they are so trippy and they were so life changing. But it is, this is simply not always the case. They can hurt you in very bad ways and you must anticipate for what is going to happen or what could happen. I've had some trips where I was going into the trip very positively and then as my experience was flowing, I started to feel crept up emotions that I was just repressing down inside myself. And this way I saw that I was taking mushrooms just because I wanted to escape the world. But that's not how it works, you see. You can drink alcohol if you want to escape the world. You can smoke weed if you want to escape the world. But taking mushrooms and expecting to escape the world, that's not a thing because mushrooms won't numb you. Mushrooms will show you your deepest emotions and your deepest thought loops that are ongoing. They will show you yourself in a very intense way. You get very conscious of your inner world on mushrooms or truffles. They will grab your emotions and your thoughts loop and show them right into your face. And if you are not ha ready to handle those, then good luck. So whatever you do, don't expect a good outcome and don't expect a bad outcome. Simply expect nothing and just flow with whatever the trip gives you. This whole story might sound a little bit scary for you, but if you take a low dose, if you take a beginner's dose, then it isn't likely for you to get overwhelmed by your deepest crept up emotions. On mediocre dosages, you will have more control over your trip. Which makes me think of an interesting metaphor that the YouTuber your mate Tom used. He said, a high dose of mushrooms is like diving deep under the water, diving 30 meters deep on the water, looking up and then see that the surface of the water of the ocean is frozen and you can't go back up. So if something bad happens down there, you're fucked. And taking a beginner's dose or a low dose is like snorkeling. It is like swimming on the surface of the ocean. And if you want, you can take a look downside. You can take a look into the deep waters. And if you don't feel safe over there because depths are pretty scary sometimes, you can just pop your head right out of the water and feel safe again. 
so moral of the story a low dose gives you more control and as you are going to heighten your dose as you get more experience you must learn how to surrender to the trip because control is something you want to release during your trip and you want to flow with the trip which brings me to the following point number two dosage and dosage is of course very important especially your first time actually especially always but the first time you take a substance you don't know how it will react in your body so you can't anticipate on it everybody experiences different trips because everybody thinks different thoughts everybody feels different emotions and everybody has a different metabolism system in their body it all works a slightly different so when a friend comes to you and say that his five grams of dried magic mushroom dose was good then you shouldn't expect that it will also do good on you what i recommend you to do to determine your dose is go to the link in the description to the zamnesia website they have a calculator which calculates how much uh, truffles or mushrooms you need to take in order to achieve a certain dose so depending on your body weight depending whether or whether you take truffles or mushrooms whether they are dried or fresh and whether which dose you want so if you want a low dose a mediocre dose or a high dose all of those factors are calculated by Zamnesia you just need to fill in fill in a little bit of information and then it gives you a very accurate amount of dose that you could take for yourself with who will you trip this is very important with who you will trip will determine the outcome of your whole trip to kind of give you a view on why it is that way i will give you an example i experienced myself a friend of mine wanted to try truffles and so we did she wanted another friend to be there with her because she also wanted to try truffles it was their first time so they didn't know what to expect they didn't do any research and they had the tendency to smoke a joint yeah i recommended that they didn't smoke a joint but they, after we ate the truffles they did it anyway so they were very stoned of the weed and then the effects of the truffles came up and it was their first time to do truffles which is not a good idea they were spacing really hard and my friend went upstairs to look at the ceiling for a couple of hours and i was downstairs meanwhile with her friend which i didn't know that good I was a very shy and introvert boy at the time and I was not comfortable around new people and I was spacing on truffles. She was spacing really hard and me too but she was she had also smoked a joint so she was a little bit further away and it was her first time. So we went in to talk and this uncomfortable feeling came up on me and it grew and it grew and I became more shy. and. All of a sudden the whole trip for me was just one shy experience it was not fun at all even the next day I had these shy feelings and they didn't go away that easily and even after a couple of days I was more shy than usual so mushrooms or truffles are not always a good thing if you go tripping around with random persons that you don't know so good then it can end up in a bad trip or a negative trip once again it had nothing to do with this girl she was very kind and very nice to me I was just I couldn't handle my own psychology I couldn't handle these negative emotions and it just kept growing and they grew bigger and bigger so what I learned from this trip was that I should always trip with people I know very good with people who I am comfortable with and I really recommend you don't do your first mushroom experience with people you barely know. Actually, I recommend you never do mushrooms with people you barely know. Because you are probably going to regret that. Number four, where should you trip? I recommend you do your trip your first time in a very comfortable environment like someone's house or your own house and make sure that you have bathroom access that is very important make sure that there are no people around that negatively influence your trip like your parents or negative friends or your teachers 
if they are around for some reason. After your first couple of encounters with magic mushrooms, after getting some experience with them, after knowing how it reacts on your body and how it behaves within you, then you can take it to the next level. Then you can go to uh, like nature for example or trip in some cool place. You can go into nature with friends and a trip sitter and get fascinated by a tree that does exactly nothing. After looking at a tree for five minutes straight on mushrooms, you will never look at a tree the same way again. You will see that a tree is alive, it is an organism, it is not an object. I don't recommend going into nature your first times. You need to be comfortable with the substance you are taking and then you can take it to the next level. And also very important, if someday you are going to trip in nature, take a shit before you go because you don't want poop standing in your way. Number five, preparing your body for the trip. Preparing your body to be calm and at ease when you trip. I've made an entire video about how to prevent nausea during and before your trip as well as how to keep it calm. That video will go a little bit in depth on why you get nauseous due to magic mushroom intake. And it will also show you how to prevent nausea or how to fix nausea once you get nauseous. I'll put a link to that video down in the description. But here I will address the main points to keep in mind. Only eat healthy and easy to digest food the day of your trip and three days at least before your trip. The substance you consider to take is psilocybin and psilocybin will turn into psilocin within your body. Then the psilocin will bind to your serotonin receptors or replace serotonin on your serotonin receptors. And these serotonin receptors usually control the way your digestive system behaves. What psilocin does, it changes the way your digestive system behaves because it replaces the necessary serotonin on your serotonin receptors. This is the reason why people get nauseous. But if you treat your intestines with respect and eat healthy foods like pokeball, like salads, like uh, veggies and fruits, then your digestive system will handle the switch from serotonin to psilocin better. Your intestines will thank you for eating healthy. Number six, preparing your mind for the trip. Your mind is one of the most complex things in your experience. The average modern day person thinks on the average 40,000 thoughts per day. But of how many of those thoughts are you conscious? How many of those thoughts are positive? And how many of them are negative? Can you even answer those questions? Our feelings and emotions also deviate throughout the day. They go from there to there. You feel this, then you feel that. But are you always conscious of what you are feeling throughout the day? Not all of your thoughts and emotions are always 24 seven in your conscious experience, but they still happen. And the root cause of those emotions and thoughts are very likely not in your conscious experience. The question I am trying to address here is, how good do you know yourself? Are you a positive or a negative person? Which emotions dominate your life? Love or anger? Compassion or fear? You must know this. If you don't know the answers to those questions, then mushrooms or truffles will very likely show you those answers. They will show you the answers whether you like it or not. Magic mushrooms will uncover your most deeply rooted emotions, your most dominant emotions. You will be confronted with those emotions and thoughts either way. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter with who you are. You cannot escape your own psychology. So your emotions and thoughts better be good, right? I mean, you don't want your sadness or your depression to multiply by 10 times and cry all night in front of your friends. Your mind should be a pleasant place to be in. If that's the case, you should be fine. Number seven, the come up stage. This is the part of the trip where a lot of anxiety can come up if you don't prepare properly for this. You are very likely, especially your first time, to have come up anxiety or to 
feel emotions of fear. This is normal. This is supposed to happen. This also happen this still happens to me. Almost everybody gets nervous or a little bit anxiety in the come up stage. So don't freak out when that happens. Just say to yourself, this is normal. This is supposed to happen. I will be fine. The come up stage is also the stage where nausea is very likely to happen. If you want to know more about how to prevent nausea or to fix nausea during your trip, then click this link or this link, I don't know which direction it is, or the link in the description to another video of mine. Number eight. What obstacles are most likely for you to get confronted by during your trip? During your trip and during the come up stage of your trip, you are likely to get confronted by certain obstacles. The main obstacles that I want to address here are sensational overload, how to deal with negative thoughts and negative emotions, how to deal with negative influences from outside, so negative things that are happening around you, and how to deal with stripping in groups. What tends to happen to some people, including myself, is an sensational overload you see when you trip the information you absorb through your senses so the visuals you see the sounds you hear the things you touch taste and smell you experience them more intensely this information you absorb is now intensified and your brain needs to work harder to create the image of reality you usually have if the brain is overstimulated with too much information and uh, it doesn't have the time to process all of this information, then you can get into a panic attack. For example, you are with multiple friends. One is playing with the light switch, one is trying to have a conversation with you, one is playing loud music, and your mother is calling you all at the same time. This can definitely be too intense for you, causing panic. To fix this problem is go to a, uh, a silent room, go to a place where you can process everything, go to a calm place, go outside and just sit there for a while, stay calm, focus on your breathing, you will be fine. When you find a calm place, your brain can keep up with the information it is processing, then you will calm down. Number two, how to deal with negative thoughts and negative emotions. And this one is very interesting, yet pretty complicated because most people don't understand their psychology. If you get a certain thought or a certain emotion which doesn't feel comfortable, which we consider a negative emotion, you shouldn't label it as a bad thing because that is all that is happening. Once you see a thought or an emotion as a bad thing, you will start resisting to it. And this will create more of that negativity. This will create more of that certain thought or emotion. And you get stuck in a loop in it. Instead of resisting the thought and emotion, instead of labeling it as a bad thing, start watching it. Start observing the thought or emotion say to yourself oh okay this is just another thought this is just another emotion it is okay to feel this way even though it is unpleasant it is okay to feel that way say that to yourself say that you won't die say that this is okay it will fade away and you will feel happy again in a matter of time have a funny video on standby have a funny meme uh, compilation or something out on your YouTube so that if this happens you just watch the memes, you laugh a little bit and then you get dragged into positivity again. Actually I want to talk a little bit more about thought and emotion because you are not your thoughts and you cannot control your thoughts. It doesn't work like that. Thought and emotion are tools that come into the package of being human and they can't harm you unless you let them harm you. Thinking is just a sensation. If you stand right here and you do this, you feel why your hand is in space. It is a sensation, it is always there, but it isn't bothering you. And notice that a thought is also just a sensation. It can't harm you, but when a certain thought pops up, you think, you tend to think, 
oh, this is bad, go away, go away. And when it is a good thing, you like to think about it. But there is no thing as good thought and bad thought. You just have thoughts and you are labeling them as good and bad. That is the problem. So next time you have a bad thought, think about what I said. Is this thought really bad? Or am I just labeling it as bad? Did I attach a certain emotion to that thought making it bad? Ask yourself these questions when you are experiencing bad thoughts because only the simple principle of a thought is only bad when you make it bad helped me so much. It helped me realize that thoughts are just sensations. They are nothing to be scared of. It is just a tool of you. It is a tool of being human and you should use it to your benefit. Number three, negative outer influences. And this one is hard to solve but because it doesn't happen within you. You don't have that much control over it. But it is not impossible to fix. You can have a friend that is being annoying. You can have your mom calling you or texting you because you didn't do the laundry and now she's mad at you and you are totally tripping balls. And there are tons of other things that can happen in our environment that can negatively influence your trip. This is where a good trip sitter comes into play because a trip sitter can text your mom for you whilst you are tripping. A trip sitter is someone to talk to when something is wrong. A trip sitter can fix a problem in your environment a lot quicker than you because you are tripping. But if you don't have the luxury of a trip sitter, then your options become pretty limited. So yeah, what can I say about this? Just trip with friends in a trip with friends you are comfortable with in a trustworthy environment with bathroom access and don't look at your phone too often. That will help too. Number four, tripping in groups. Tripping in groups can be lots of fun. You can play games and such, but there is one major problem with tripping in a group. There's a major problem that always occurs when you are in a group. The thing with a group is everybody wants to do something different. They want to play soccer. They want to go into the forest. One will uh, want to catch a butterfly. You want to stay home but everybody wants to do something else and everybody is trying to drag you down with them. If a situation like this occurs, then be strong because don't ever do something you do not enjoy whilst you are tripping. This can make your trip turn bad in ways you don't even see for possible yet. If the whole group goes to some place or do something that you are not comfortable with, then it is best to either sit on the side and just watch them or you can leave with your trip sitter. Don't leave alone. But going home and leaving the group you are tripping with is a last resort. Just stand out for what you want to do and don't follow people blindly, even though they are your friends. Tripping in groups can be lots of fun, but you should always do what you would like to do. Don't do something you are not comfortable with. That is my only advice for tripping in groups. Please note that I am not trying to scare you away from mushrooms or truffles. Magic mushrooms and magic truffles gave me some of the most memorable and good experience I've ever had in my life. The experience is likely to go into a good direction depending on your inner state and environment. I just want you to be aware of the risks that are involved in taking a substance like this. I've experienced some very negative trips and that's the reason why I don't think that Magic mushrooms nor truffles should be glorified. They can potentially harm you and leave you with scars. And I think that it is also important to talk about the risks that come with them because they are not always so magical as people describe them. Just be prepared that one day, not, not maybe your first trip, maybe not your second trip, maybe not your third trip, but be prepared that someday you could have a bad trip. But then again, overall, the magic mushroom or magic truffle experience is a very enjoyable way of experience. By the way, magic truffles, I promised you some valuable information about that. Magic truffles are a legalized luxury food in Holland 
and since 13 September 2019 they became legal all over the planet. You don't have to buy illegal magic mushrooms anymore because there is a legal alternative with the same psychoactive compounds in it. If you want to know more about that, I've made an entire video about the legality of magic truffles and I'll put it in the description of this video. You could also check the homepage of my website which I also put a link down in the description below if you want to know more about magic truffles and their legality. With that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you on your next trip.